Hey, I'm Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this is the N3 application guide. I will have a ton of videos out in the future about everything that this nano coating is capable of, including the different foods and drinks and all kinds of things you can throw at it. This here is just the application guide. This is for those people who have just bought it and want to make sure they know how to put it on correctly. The first thing you need is a finish that is completely cured already. The N3 is not a traditional wood finish. This is a nano coating. It's what goes over your finish. Think of it like putting wax on a car. It's not the paint, it's not the clear coat, it's what protects everything. So this piece here has been finished with Rubio Monaco. I did two coats, it's cured for about two weeks, which for Rubio you need it to cure for at least one week before applying the N3. This piece has been sitting in my dusty shop for those couple weeks, so it's pretty dirty right now. So even if your piece has been curing in a clean room, you wanna give it a thorough cleaning before adding the N3, because even things like oils on your fingers can kind of compromise this N3 nano coating. So I have a regular microfiber towel, and I'm just gonna wipe the dust off. If it's really dusty, you could blow it off, but nothing fancy here, just wiping off all of that surface dust. And I can see I have a fair amount there. The next step in cleaning is using a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water. And I just have a mini spray bottle here that I've mixed at a 50-50 ratio with that isopropyl alcohol and water. This is a standard blue shop rag and I just wipe it down. You don't wanna soak it, but this will remove all of the oils from your hands and anything else that could inhibit this N3 from contacting the actual surface of the wood. I previously finished the underside with two coats of this N3 hard coat, and I can't say that it's absolutely necessary to finish your piece on both the top and the bottom with the N3. I just tend to be a little anal about that because I like to minimize the chance of any wood movement in the way of warping or cupping by making sure the top and the bottom are finished as equally as possible. If there's any slight variation, it could cause one side to absorb some moisture either from your spills or just from the air itself. And if the other side isn't finished exactly the same, it could cause a little bit of wood movement in the way of that warping or cupping. Again, it might be overkill, but I have finished the underside of this with two coats of the hard coat. This is a two part system and what I'm gonna be putting on first is the N3 hard coat. And this is the real protection. This is what's gonna really protect the actual wood from the spills and damage that can occur. On top of this, after it cures, we're gonna add the top coat. And that's really like a wear layer, something that you can refresh and touch up from time to time. Or this hard coat, you'll never need to retouch it. For the hard coat, you'll need a few things. You'll need one, the N3 hard coat. You'll need an applicator pad. You'll need a kind of a suede microfiber. And I like to have a stopwatch handy because this is a finish that you can mess up. It's not completely foolproof. So I get a stopwatch handy so that way I have all my times just rolling and I don't miss a single step. Before you apply any of this to your pad, you wanna give it a good shake. And I do this before every coat. Now you wanna apply a liberal amount, but you don't need to go crazy to your pad. So I just kind of draw a couple of lines. You can see there. And this is where I like to work fairly quick. You don't need to be, need to be completely panicked. And I'm gonna work in a box and it's gonna be just about half of this 30 by 60 inch desk. So I'm gonna come here with one line and then I'm gonna work a, into a grid. And I'm gonna use that main area there to draw it out over my entire piece. I can see it's getting a little dry, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna keep working that out. And what you wanna do is you wanna work this in until you start to feel it drag. And it is pretty obvious when it starts to drag, especially using these pads, because that pad will really start to flex on you. And you can see, I like to get the sides at the same time that I do each area, so that way it's, everything's consistent. Starting to get a little bit of drag.
And I recommend, until you get comfortable with this, is having a little cheater sheet that shows you all the steps so you're not scrambling to remember what the next step is or how long you were supposed to wait. And I, send, I go a little bit lighter as it's dragging. Just want it to look consistent. Now once it started to drag, I'm gonna start my timer. I'm gonna wait 60 seconds. And you can really see how much sheen this N3 gives you. There is a clear line where that hard coat's been added. And some of that will buff off when we go to the next step, but it really does increase the intensity, the color, and the contrast of your piece. All right, it's been 60 seconds, and don't freak out if it's been 70 seconds or 80 seconds, it's fine. I just like to use 60 seconds as a general rule. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove off any excess by dragging this at a 45. And you'll really feel any spots with that excess in the pad, even if you can't see it here. And we are exposing that actual N3 nano coating to the air, allowing it to cure. And now we're gonna get that timer for another 60 seconds. While our timer is going, you can get your suede microfiber towel ready. And you really, really should use these. I will admit one time I didn't have any and I used a blue shop rag and it didn't ruin the project. But these will guarantee you don't get any scratches from that N3 as it's starting to cure and dragging it across. And I can see we just crossed our 60 seconds. So I'm gonna just very lightly, don't put your elbow into it. Don't just work this off like you might with a hard wax oil. And you're just gonna lightly remove any excess. Don't forget the sides. You do not want to leave too much of this on there because that's where you get those glossy, shiny spots. And you just kind of let the weight of your hand do the work. And you can feel how much smoother it is already. You can see a clear line where that contrast has really been bumped up and it's increased the sheen of this. And there we go. That is one section done. Next thing is we're gonna work that section and blend them together. This next section we're gonna do exactly the same as the first. And just like this section where I drew my first line on the far end and worked it towards the center, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. If we had drawn two lines in the middle, it could have put on too much of this N3 and caused to get a little bit of shiny spots. So I'm gonna use the same side of my pad since we're on the same coat, you don't wanna use the pad more than once on different coats. So after this coat, we'll never use this side of the pad again. Now I'm gonna draw my line, work it towards there, and just working it out, just like the other one. And I can tell the pad is a little bit more saturated than it was that first time, which makes it go on a little easier. Not forget the sides. And then you want to overlap it just slightly. You, don't, you want to make sure it's completely saturated. And saturated might be the wrong word. Maybe it's the right word. But we're going to work it in until we start feeling that drag. And I can feel it right now. It's starting to get a little bit of roll in this pad, which means it's starting to flash off, which means it's starting to cure which is good. So I'm gonna just make a nice light pass. Keep it as even as we can. Now I'm gonna wait that 60 seconds. All right, 60 seconds is up and now I'm gonna level it just like the other side by dragging it at a 45. And this is, if you have any of those spots with a little too much of the N3, this is where it'll drag. I'm not feeling any yet, but it's pretty obvious when there are. And again, this is not a finish or a nano coating that you really wanna scrub all of it off like a lot of finishes out there. You wanna be very gentle and get just the right amount on there. So we've trialed that gonna set my timer again for 60 seconds before we come back for the final buff off. 
For this applicator pad, I was able to use the same side for both sections of this N3 coating. However, for the buffing part, you don't want to use the same buffing section on two different sections because what will happen is it can start to cure in here, get those little micro crystals that can actually be really sharp. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get that to a new spot and it's good to keep track of which side of the pad you've used because you never wanna use the same side twice. So now we're coming up just past our 60 seconds. I got a fresh pad and just real lightly, weight of our hand, don't wanna to remove too much. To remove any excess. Again, don't forget the sides. And I cannot see any difference from the two sections. They blend extraordinarily well if you use this method. I like to keep it in a pretty small section. If this was a dining table, I would have probably broken this into four or even six sections. Don't be too worried about seeing these sections. When I first started this, I was sure I was gonna be able to tell the difference from sections, but you can see here, you cannot tell the difference whatsoever from section to section. So work in small areas. I'm gonna come back, do a second coat of the hard coat in about 30 to 60 minutes, and I'll see you then. All right, it's been 30 minutes, and now we can add a second coat of this N3 hard coat. And I like to go overkill. I send these out in the world. I make furniture for a living. I send it to customers all over the country and all over the world. So I wanna send it to them with the highest probability of success. So I'm gonna do two to three coats of this hard coat on every piece that I do, and then two to three coats of the top coat. Again, this might be a little bit overkill, but I like to give myself the best chance for success. The second and third coats of the N3 hard coat are gonna go on just like the first coat with a couple of small exceptions. And the first thing you're gonna notice is how smooth the second coat is and how much easier it is to glide across your piece. And that's because we've already sealed it with that base coat. And because of that, we're gonna use a lot less. So you don't need to be quite as liberal on your pad when you're applying it. You wanna wait a minimum of 24 hours between the hard coat and the top coat. And with each layer independently, you wanna wait a minimum of 60 minutes. So if you're gonna put on multiple layers of the hard coat, you wanna wait a minimum of 60 minutes. And in a very cold shop, maybe push that out to about 90 minutes. In a very warm shop, you could probably get away with as little as 30 minutes between each layer. So again, make sure you wait 60 minutes between each layer and 24 hours between the hard coat and the top coat. All right, I've just finished the final coat of the N3 hard coat. Now I need to wait 24 hours before applying the top coat. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll show you these steps to applying the top coat. It's been 24 hours and we're ready to apply this top coat. And remember, there isn't really a window that you need to apply this top coat as long as it's been at least 24 hours. The process is essentially exactly the same as the hard coat, but we'll go through the steps just so everything is crystal clear. There are a few things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a fresh microfiber like I have here. Again, remember, we do not reuse any sides of this, even between sections, because it can cause little micro scratches in that N3 coating. You're gonna need a fresh pad for the same reason. We do not reuse the sides of pad. Use each side only once. And then we're, of course, going to need the Blacktail Studio N3 top coat. Top coat is your wear layer. This is the protection against daily use. If you have kids, if you're having a lot of damage on it, you're gonna want as many coats of this as possible. And within reason, I usually do about two or three top coats on my pieces. You can actually continue to build the sheet if you really wanna do more than that, or if you just wanna do one coat, that'll probably be fine too. Just like with a hard coat, I find it really useful to have a stopwatch handy. Don't get too hung up on getting this right down to the second. This just prevents me from forgetting where I'm at in the finishing process. So I keep my stopwatch handy. And to start, we're gonna give it a shake, just like the hard coat. And the first application on the pad always takes a little bit more of this before it kind of saturates. The nice thing about these pads is that it is this microfiber outer layer, but it doesn't absorb into it. So it's not a sponge underneath that's gonna continue absorbing this N3 and wasting it. It will only stay on this microfiber portion. And just like before, we're gonna draw our initial line here. And I can see I don't quite have enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna draw this across the piece, getting about halfway across. We just wanna make sure we do not miss any areas because this does increase the sheen. 
and you'll be able to see if you miss a spot. Don't forget your edges. We're gonna work this in until it starts to get tacky. And I can already feel this is getting a little bit tacky. It doesn't take very long. Just evening out that sheen slightly. You don't wanna push down too hard and wipe off all of the good stuff. And now, start that timer. About 60 seconds is how long I like to wait. I recommend doing this with some good light. It helps if the light is on the other side of the project because you'll be able to see those areas that have those high spots, the areas with a little bit more of the finish on it. And once we get to our 60 seconds that we just reached, we're gonna use this. And it's just kind of troweling off the excess. And if you see some of those shiny spots, it's okay at this point. You wanna just remove the kind of bigger ones. We're gonna let it go for another 60 seconds. And again, you'll still be able to see some of those shiny spots, but on this next step, when we buff it off, we're gonna remove all those and there should not be any of those uneven sheen spots. All right, coming up on the 60 seconds, clean part of the microfiber and you'll feel some drag on those higher spots which is good, because that means we're removing them. You don't wanna put your elbow grease into this. You don't wanna act like you're buffing a really aggressive wax. We're just removing the excess. We wanna make sure we actually leave the N3 on there, because that's what's gonna give us our protection. Right now, I don't see any of those high spots, which is great. I can see a slight contrast from the coated section to the uncoated, which again is great because now it shows that we're bumping that sheen up, which is one, one of my favorite things about this. Okay, looks good. Now we're ready to finish the second half of this. For the second half of this same coat, we can use the same side of this pad, but for any subsequent coats, we wanna use a new side of the pad. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the N3 top coat. See if that's enough. I'm gonna draw our line. I'm gonna work it out. And I can see since this pad has already been saturated from that first application, it took much less on the pad. We wanna go just past the middle. This is not something that you wanna tape off the sections. They blend together really, really nicely. So I'm gonna go just past, not forgetting my sides. I can feel it starting to tack up right now getting some resistance in this pad. I'm gonna go one more with the grain, very light. And it's starting to look really, really good. It gives it just this beautiful, deep, wet look. And the protection is my favorite part about this, being able to use this with any chemical and any food or drink, and I say any within reason, but the sheen is such a nice bonus. So we're gonna start our timer. Wait 60 seconds and we're gonna come back, level it out. All right, it's been 60 seconds. Gonna remove any excess at a 45. I'm not picking up a lot of excess on this coat, which is fine. Sometimes if you have too much down, you'll get partway through and it almost, it just really drags, it hits a speed bump. And I'm not getting a lot of that, which means I probably had just about the right amount on there. And if you're ever worried about not having enough, I always apply at least two to three of the top coat. It's not entirely necessary for protection, but for duration and wear and tear on it, I like to have it because this is gonna be going out in the, in the real world to a customer. So I will be applying three total coats. Just need to buff off this last section in about another 45 seconds. And this first coat of the top coat will be done. One tip I can give you to keep track of which side you've used because you don't want to reuse the same side, just take a Sharpie, and make a little X, and that means we don't want to use that side anymore. But if we do this properly, we can get eight different uses out of this one towel by folding it into these quarters like this. All right, it's been 60 seconds. I have my used portion of this towel. I'm gonna move to a clean section with no X on it, and I'm just gonna buff lightly. You can really start to feel how smooth it is now. 
When you use this N3 with something like a hard wax oil where you can still feel the wood grain, the feel of the wood is incredible. It's something that you really can't show on video just how amazing it feels, but it's not like something with a big, thick finish like an epoxy or a lacquer. You can still feel the natural wood, but you get that insane chemical protection that you really can't even get from something like an epoxy because the epoxy shows the scratches and this really minimizes how many scratches you'll see. So this, my absolute favorite finishing process using something like a Rubia Monocoat, hard wax oil, and then this N3 on top of it. Okay, this coat is looking really, really nice. We're gonna wait about 30 to 60 minutes before applying a second and then another 30 to 60 minutes before applying a third and final coat. And then this piece will be completely done. Okay, I have now finished the third and final top coat of this. This piece needs to sit for about 24 hours before exposing it to any liquids. It'll be fully cured in seven days, but you can go ahead and use it after that 24 hours or so. As far as care, it is very, very, very durable. I still like to clean it with just a damp microfiber rag and some water. If for some reason that doesn't remove it, you can use some you know, Dawn dish soap with some water. It will be fine with most commercial cleaners. It is incredibly durable, but I don't like to stress it any more than you have to. So I, I just recommend clean water on a microfiber and then maybe just some soapy water on a microfiber and that should remove any possible stains. I am constantly testing this to see where the breaking point is for this. And so far, I haven't found much of a breaking point. I've done hot sauce, I've done beer, I've done wine, I've done water, I've done lemon juice, I've done pineapple juice. I've done hot cups and I did find that boiling water will leave a watermark, but if you just have a hot cup that's say about as hot as you can hold, I did one about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it didn't leave any mark, but one that was literally boiling and the outside of the cup was over 200 degrees, that did leave a mark. So it's not for hot pans, I guess is what I'm saying. Other than that, it's just very, very easy to maintain and should look beautiful for years. I wanted to address some of the questions you may have and some of the situations I've experienced personally when applying the N3. So I've compiled a list of some of the most frequently asked questions. One of the things that I've noticed is what if you do everything properly, you set a glass down, you have a ring of water, you take it up, you wipe it away, and you still see a ring. I found with Rubio Monaco specifically, sometimes you'll still see a ring for anywhere from two minutes to up to 24 hours. So don't panic, let it air dry, and the ring will go away on its own. Can you use the Blacktail N3 over things like epoxy, shellac, lacquer? The answer is yes. You can use this over any woodworking finish, whether it's a urethane, hard wax, epoxy, any woodworking finish you can apply this over. Can you use it on bare wood? No, this is not a standalone finish, so you cannot apply the N3 directly to bare wood. What is the safe temperature range for applying the N3 nano coating? We recommend a minimum shop temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and we haven't really found a maximum temperature. However, if it is a very hot shop, you're gonna have to work a little quicker as it will start to flash off faster. One of the most common questions I get anytime I do any wood finishing is, is that particular finish food safe? And food safe is a very misunderstood topic, and what it actually means, it is literally safe to consume the product itself. And I wanna be very clear, the Blacktail Studio N3 nano coating is not safe for human consumption. All of that said is most people use plates, most people are not physically consuming the table that they have built, and it is perfectly safe to use on your furniture, it just does not carry that FDA food safe label. Can you use the N3 outdoors? You can absolutely use the N3 outdoors. The top coat has UV inhibitors, which will go a long way in protecting your piece from UV damage. That said, any piece left in the direct sun or direct weather is going to need refinishing eventually. Does the N3 yellow over time? Unlike many wood finishes like epoxy or polyurethane, the N3 will not yellow over time. In fact, the top coat has UV inhibitors, which will go a long way in protecting those types of finishes from yellowing. I want protection, but I don't want any more gloss. Can I still use the N3? If you want protection, but you want to minimize the amount of gloss, only use the hard coat. It won't give you quite the same protection, but it will keep that sheen down. Since the N3 adds protection, can I sand to a higher grit? This applies mainly to hard wax oil type finishes where you get more protection the lower grit you sand. Where in the past with no N3 Nano over the top, I haven't been able to get really serviceable quality out of my pieces sanding above 180 grit. When you add the N3, I tested pieces up to 400 grit and still had amazing protection. Do I have to use those applicator pads or can I rewash or reuse them? 
We strongly recommend using our pads and towels and it's not just because we want to sell you more stuff. If you really want, you can get on Amazon and find some other pads and towels that are probably going to be just as good. But if you're doing something like a high gloss finish, a high gloss epoxy, a high gloss lacquer, and you use a blue shop towel or you reuse a pad, you're definitely going to induce some scratches into that. All of that said, if you have a kind of a low sheen Rubio Monocoat type piece, it's only sanded to 120 grit, you can probably get away with using a, something like a blue shop towel to apply this N3. Don't recommend it, but if you're in a real bind and you have a satin piece, you might be able to get away with it. One final note that I want you to take is that no finish and no coating is completely bulletproof. If you really try, you can damage this coating. However, it will go a long, long ways in protecting your piece. Thank you so much for your interest in the Blacktail Studio N3 Nano, and if you have any additional questions, be sure to ask them in the comments below.